I'm glad to see that our national, national president of the NAACP here in Dayton, Ohio, Derek Forward, has finally took notice to what I've been saying. Because it says right here in CNN Politics, uh, explainer, what is the Ku Klux Klan Act cited in lawsuit against Donald J. Trump? The Democratic Chairman of the House Homeland Security Committee has filed a lawsuit against former President Donald Trump that cites a little-known federal statute that was first passed after the Civil War. The complaint filed Tuesday by the Democratic Representative Benny Thompson of Mississippi accuses Trump, his attorney Rudy Giuliani, and the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers violating the 1871 Ku Klux Klan Act. The lawsuit accuses them of inciting the January 6th Capitol riot to prevent the certification of the 2020 presidential election. The NAACP is backing the lawsuit with other members of Congress planning to join it as plaintiffs in the coming days and weeks. Thompson and NAACP leaders say they want Trump to be held accountable for his role in the insurrection. While the majority of Republicans in the Senate advocated the responsibility to hold the president accountable. We must hold him accountable for the insurrection that he so blatantly planned, Thompson said. Further, our failure to do so will only invite this type of authoritarianism for the anti-democratic forces on the far right that are so intent on destroying our country. Jason Miller, a spokesperson for Trump, said the former president did not incite or work to incite riots at the Capitol. President Trump has been acquitted into the Democrats' latest impeachment witch hunt. And the facts are irrefutable, Miller said in a statement. <clears throat> President Trump did not plan, produce, or organize a January 6th rally on the ellipse. President Trump did not incite or conspire to incite any violence at the Capitol on January the 6th. Giuliani did not immediately respond to a request for comment. The Civil War era statute mentioned in the lawsuit is scarcely used but reflects historic efforts to thwart members of Congress. Here is what we know about it. What does the 1871 Ku Klux Klan Act do? The federal statute was passed after Civil War to combat violence by the KKK and allow civil action to be taken against people who use force, intimidation, or threat to prevent anyone from upholding the duties of their office. It bans people from engaging in conspiracies and violence to block members of Congress from doing their job. John Greenbaum, the chief counsel and senior deputy director for the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights, said the Ku Klux Klan Act is used when there are specific threats, including actions that threaten the right to vote or prevent federal officers from doing their job. If you have the right facts, it's something that can be a powerful tool. Greenbaum said, I don't think people necessarily understand the Ku Klux Klan Act very well because it isn't something that's been used that much. It's a pretty technical statute, and of course it applies most broadly than to, more broadly than to the Ku Klux Klan's activities. Joseph Zellers, an attorney representing Thompson in the NAA lawsuit, called Trump, Giuliani, and the two groups the principal architects of the insurrection and said the historic KKK law could be used to protect Congress members who were impacted that day. Unfortunately, we are again needing to invoke the same statute to ensure protection for the members of Congress who were threatened and subject to intimidation. Seller said Tuesday, as you heard Congressman Thompson speak about, suffered real harm during the course of the insurrection and other events that gave rise to it. At the time it was passed, the law was intended to protect black people and members of Congress from being terrorized by the KKK. The KKK had particularly been known to use threats, assaults, and destruction to influence elections and intimidate white Republicans who were attempting to participate in the reunited National Congress. The group also sought to reverse and block the Reconstruction Era activities in the South that gave black people political power and civil rights. It was specifically meant to provide federal civil remedies for federal officers who were prevented from performing their duties by two or more individuals. Whether federal marshals in the post-Civil War South, federal judges in inconstructed lower courts, or federal legislators, 
University of Texas law professor and Supreme Court analyst Stephen Baldick said, Baldick, who also is a CNN contributor, said the provisions of the law can easily be applied to the January 6th riots, given that two or more people considered to stop Congress from performing its constitutional function of certifying President Biden's electoral college victory. As in you, the professor of law at the University of Chicago and former civil rights attorney said the Ku Klux Klan Act was a response to the emergence of the KKK as a kind of instrument for reestablishing racial hierarchies in the South. Hugh said that the initial, initially the lost law momentum because the Supreme Court has a series of rulings that were very hostile, particularly to civil rights claimants such as black people facing violence in the South. There was also a national movement away from the idea of Southern Reconstruction, Hope said. What has the law been, when has the law been used? While the statute is rarely used, a handful of lawsuits in recent years have cited it. Notably, Trump was already facing a lawsuit that alleges he violated the KKK Act when he attempted to overturn the election results of major cities last year. The NAACP Legal Defense and Educational Fund filed the lawsuits in December saying Trump disenfranchised voters of color by trying to slow and stop voting counts in efforts to tightly contested states. Last year, the National Coalition on Black Civic Participation filed a federal lawsuit against the right-wing political operatives Jack Bergman and Jacob Wall, saying they violated the KKK Act when they conspired to intimidate and threaten many thousands of eligible voters. Bergman and Wall were accused of targeting black voters in 85,000 robocalls that spread false information about voting by mail. A statute was also cited last year in a lawsuit filed by St. Louis Circuit Court Kimberly Garner that claimed a police union used a racially motivated conspiracy against her. Gardner, a black woman, said that the police union harassed and intimidated her and city officials attempted to silence her and remove her from office. The lawsuit, which was ultimately dismissed, alleged that there were attempts to block her reform efforts. CNN's Nicole Chavez and Je Jessica Snyder contributed to this report, and I'm going to give a tribute a little bit too. If you go to my broadcast on YouTube, you'll see where the exact same type of things happened to our mayor here, Charlie Sanders. Charlie Sanders died in 2018 and deserves a memorial. You'll also find things like a uh, tale of events from 1963 that lead all the way up to the 7th District Senate seat in Steve Wilson about how Lebanon Citizens National Bank undercut farmers on the value of their property. And they turned around and sold it to people like Marathon's Vice President Seminarelli and BP, who moved in this, into the uh, Standard Oil settlements uh, in the gas stations along 71 and took over the reins uh, when they got here. And also uh, Rockefeller, when he sold uh, the gas stations to them, uh, gave the power for them to hand over Mark Hazelwood, uh, to the pilot Flying J gas stations that you see on every interstate exit. Mark Hazelwood owns the Cleveland Browns, and uh, BP built their world headquarters in Cleveland. It's the largest uh, building there, and they painted it pink. Um, if you follow these uh, ridiculous Patriot Act guidelines for them to uh, have surveillance for their DEA and FBI exercises that got President Ford to resign, they also have a backside of that. And the back side of that says that they have to run SARS reports for $10,000 worth of money movement a day. These campaign contributors uh, who participated in this Donald Trump terrorist act uh, involving the uh, break-in of the White House, uh, you can follow the Biden interviews on CNN to see how significant they were. His phone calls were from Donald Trump himself. He admitted that he was uh, facing physical harm. And if they don't uh, come down here to Rob Portman's Golden Lamb, Full SARS reports for these large contribution dinners that they have and find these campaign contributors to this terrorist act, then they should have to remove all the surveillance uh, leniency that they got in their bill. You can't enforce part of a bill that passed through Congress and Senate. You have to uh, participate uh, in understanding both sides of that bill, and the back side of that bill says we can charge them with terrorism, we can walk them out the door, we can uh, take these rich people to the first hickory tree we see, and we can hang them for treason against this country of ours and scaring our children half to death 
by breaking in the White House. 